So punk rock, if it hadn't come along, I probably would have invented it because uh, it just suited me down to the ground and it gave me an opportunity just to scream into the night and just carry on and get away with bloody murder. I loved it. The only time my mum ever turned the television off, there was Countdown was on and they said, and now the latest musical uh, phenomenon from uh, England, punk rock, and it was a special on the Sex Pistols, that she got up and turned the television off and she said, you're not, you're not watching this because you'll like this too much. Me and another chap, we jumped the fence at school and we ran up to Glenfrey Road, Malvern. We went into this shop and um, got them to put on the Sex Pistols debut album. And I can remember this, this sound that came crashing through the speakers where they weren't singing in, you know, they weren't great singers, the music wasn't that complicated, but the energy and the power, and I just went, wow, I love this. So, uh, you know, punk rock music really appealed to me. And uh, a couple of years previously, I'd lost my brother up in East Timor. We've been told that Balebo was hit by artillery and mortar. This, part of this group called the Balabo Five and they'd been killed on the border with Indonesia and East Timor in 1975. We've daubed our house with the word Australia in red and the Australian flag. So I was a very angry sort of young chap and I was full of sort of rage and you know I was really sort of wanting to burn the candle at both ends. This first show we did, um, we got up and we played our, our, our set and uh, the guy who lived next door to the pub actually hated our music so much, he, he jumped the fence with an ax and uh, started chopping up the mixing desk with an ax. <laughs> this is a true story. And the police were called and they arrived en masse at this pub in Port Melbourne. And there was an all in brawl between the union members and the police and it was that moment I was on stage doing the one song and I can remember looking out at this crowd of people just fighting and screaming and beer being thrown and blood being spilt and, and I looked out at this crowd and I went, I want to do this for the rest of my life. It's your respectable hosts. Hello, good evening Australia, welcome to your lounge rooms. We're going to have a beautiful hour of love, laughter and tears. My name is Paul from the Penners and Dockers. G'day, I'm Chris, but uh, who's he? Sorry? Who's he? Look, I'd rather not talk about it if you don't mind. <laughs> and we really came along at a time in Melbourne, the Painters and Dockers, where uh, most people would be, would be aware of Nick Cave. And uh, he was a big artist in Melbourne. And, but his music and his whole scene was very black and dark and, you know, there would be lots of kids dropping their um, parents' antidepressants, you know, and coming to his gigs and everyone, you know, would stand, stand around moping and we got up and we wanted to be the exact opposite to that. We wanted to put you know, entertainment back in, into, into music. So we would do things like get up naked, covered with fish wrapped around us, dead fish wrapped around us. And, or we'd, uh, we'd um, you know, go on dressed as, we did one show where the rest of the band were all dressed as Roman soldiers and I was Christ on a cross. And uh, we, uh, yeah, we used to, for everyone that liked us, there was, there was a group of people who absolutely hated us. And then, um... They should be like that. <laughs> are, they, are they 
I fully stiff. <laughs> Indian zunga chaka hunga. Music uh, was a great let for, outlet for a lot of people to just go and jump, you know, to, to, to go to a room. There's nothing like live music to go to a room and jump around and go crazy and, uh, you know, express your feelings. It's just fantastic. In fact, you know, I still feel sorry for the younger generations today because there's just not the, the venues that there were. We, we would play, you know, four nights a week. There were so many venues to play at. And now, you know, bands, even the, you know, the newest bands only play once a month. And then you, that's got to be because you've got a single launch or because it's got to be a reason to play. We, we would just play because we could play. Is it true that mm. when you were in Painters and Dockers, mm. you used to throw condoms to the audience? Um, well, we actually got a tour of Canada where we were sponsored by the King Kong Condom Company and uh, <laughs> let's, let's... a whole tour of Canada. But every night we checked into reception, there'd be uh, 500 condoms waiting for us to, at reception. And uh -huh. the, the people at the hotel would be, oh, you Aussies like to party, hey? And uh, <laughs> we'd go and uh, throw them out at the gigs every night. There's nothing, nothing wrong with being a bit humble too. And there's nothing wrong with... Uh, uh, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to display a big ego. Big egos aren't necessarily a, a nice thing. You know, I like I said, I worked as a music journalist for 30 years, and you find that the biggest stars are the ones who always had enough time to talk to you. Like, you know, BB King, um, you know, the old blues guy. He, you know, he, he he said, take as long as you like, and I ended up talking to him for about two hours. You know, in fact, he told me he'd been on the road so many years that when he finally built his house, he had to design his um, his bedroom like a Hollywood Inn hotel room because it was the only way he could find the toilet during the night because he was more used to being in a, in a hotel room than at home and... Uh Stick true to what you believe in, you know, because at the end of the day, when all said and gone, at least you can say, you know, you followed, you followed your heart and your own brain. You know, if you if you uh, uh, too much influenced by other people, you know, then you don't end up so happy because you know you're following their dreams and their ideas. Just stick, stick true to yourself, and uh, there's no point being humble because you're not that good. I've played in bands for 30 years. I used to have this one editor who'd walk past me at my desk every day and he'd stop and look at me and go, you can't write, you can't sing, and you can't play a musical instrument. How, how have you possibly lasted 30 years in the music industry? And I said, charm. Jump the fence, I'm on my own. I was high, but I was feeling quite down. I was angry, I was mad, abused myself, drank a slab, and now some couple wants me for a chat, and says, you're going home in the back of a DV van, <laughs> you're going home in the back of a DV van, <laughs> well, up in Dilly this time of year, the temperature... Okay, cut, okay. cut, I've had it, <laughs> cut. Right, brilliant. Turn me on, turn me on.